Hey you guys, man, I am super excited today to get started. First of all, drawing, um, you know, drawing first thing in the morning is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I was doodling the other day and I came up with an idea for a seasonal piece that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. I'm going to be working in Photoshop today, so if you care to, definitely um, watch and follow along and see my process of creating a seasonal Halloween illustration. So, let's get started. Okay, today we're going to be working on the XP Pen 24 Pro 2K model. I love working on this device because, first of all, it's got over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. Second of all, it's got a 2K screen, which is absolutely gorgeous. And third and final is the real estate that it has. Real estate being the area that I can actually draw on. So I've, I come from a, uh, an illustration animation background, so I use my arm a lot whenever I draw. And the bigger the screen, the better I have a relationship with the device. And I drew this. This is my thumbnail. It actually originally was like right about there. I just doodling. And I came up with this fun little illustration that shows Phoenix. Phoenix, of course, is the logo mascot for the XP Pen Company. And this is what he looks like in his current iteration. I believe this is also sold on their website. This is just a, a plaster cast of Phoenix that you can paint. And he shows up in numerous advertising materials for the company. And I decided that it was time that he kind of ventured out into the seasonal uh, realm. So I decided to do this piece right here, sitting in a pumpkin patch, really fun. And I, I did it on a black, or not a black, I did it on a gray background. So typically what I'll do, edit, fill, is I'll put him on a, a mid-tone background like this, which I can push and pull some of my highlights. Actually, that's a little bit dark. So we're going to go ahead and push it up just a little bit. So yeah, this is just, you know, basically a thumbnail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a base to create a uh, an illustration and what I did was I went ahead and I put a gradient map on it which if you're unfamiliar with gradient maps it basically you change the lightest and the darkest hues to whatever color you specify uh, in the gradient map so to do that here let's go back to this I went over here on the right hand side I'll go ahead and bring up this menu the right hand side and I go down to this little icon that looks like a, a circle cut in half and I go down to gradient map it's one of the, it's the next to the last little selection and it's going to bring up a sub menu which is right here okay and right now it's at its default so it's black and gray so what I can do is I can specify so I click on that little square right there and then I double click here and let's say I want my darkest darks to be sort of blue color and you see it it updates uh, in real time and then I want my lightest lights not to be dark but I want them to be maybe a light blue okay now what that did basically is it created a, a gradient map over the entire uh, illustration over the entire screen so if I just wanted to be on the drawing itself I'll click option on a Mac and you see whenever I scroll over that little line in between the two layers what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a clipping mask and there you go so if I want to change this which are supposed to be highlights again I can go back I can go all the way up to here and it changes that hue rather well and there's a gradient map, and if I want to solidify or combine, I select both of these, I hit Shift, and then I hit Command E, and it combines them both. So now, he's on his own layer. Okay, so that being said, what do I do in this situation? I've created a thumbnail, we're in Photoshop, ready to rock and roll, so... I chose that blue hue because I like to have a reference for the drawing, but I don't want to really impede 
my creative process whenever I go to actually start doing the final line. And I want the final line to be, um, right now I'm just going to have it black. Now, like I just showed you, I can change it at any point in time if I like. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and back to this and I'm going to label it. It's very important that you also layer manage whenever you're doing an illustration like this because you can have 150 layers, you can have multiple uh, combinations of layers, you can have layer groups. It's important that you start getting really good habits early on if you're uh, somebody like me that likes a lot of layers. It's really good to uh, name them. So we're going to put base, color, thumb, sketch. Pretty thumb. <laughs> I didn't put the B. That's okay. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and push this back. In terms of opacity, whoops, we moved him on accident. Again, we're going to push him back. I like 35%, but that's up to you. We're going to keep it probably around 35 to 40. It also depends on how contrasty, uh, contrasted you are. So then, if I want to go ahead and add that, and I stick that on a multiply layer, again, to push back some of those, uh, it gets basically gets rid of the highlights. So, okay, so now we are ready to do our final line. Um, in illustration, you have to always remember there is a balance. You're like, okay, there's a balance, you know, yin and yang. Black and white, contrast, darks and lights, um, uh, local color. No, what I'm trying to talk about, balance, is time. You know, time spent on what's important in the context of the illustration. I didn't spend too much time on the thumbnail because I wanted to be able to spend that time later in the uh, illustration and rendering process. However, there are parts of the illustration that I feel, even though are merited and, and require work, they're not going to be as important as this area right here. So this area right here is where I'm going to put a lot of time. And these peripheral items, even though they will be there, will not be as important. So what I'm going to do is just because this illustration is going to take a little while, in the context of um, this video, I don't want it to be an hour long video. It doesn't make sense for me to do that. So you're going to watch me in time lapse. I'm going to go in and put the line, final line, and whenever we get the final line done, I'm going to come back in and we're going to talk a little bit about what I did. Now, final line, what brush do I use? Obviously, I have a lot of brushes here. Probably, I don't know how many brushes, a thousand. But there's only a few that I really like drawing with. I like this smooth sketch brush right here. Because again, it's got a little bit of a texture. It's got a great pressure curve. This tablet supports that 8,000 levels of pressure. And therefore, it's really good whenever I go in and start putting in some of the nuance lines that I will be doing. However, I love sketchiness. I love that drawn look. It gives me a children's book look. Even that, I don't know if that's a phrase or not. The children's book look. So I like using the sketch drawing brush, which is my favorite, and I have taper on. Now, I typically do turn on the tilt, and you can do that up here in the submenu. So we're in the brush. We go up to the tab up top. We click this icon that looks like a folder, and it brings up the brush settings. This shape dynamics, you can control, and you can customize the brush. And then it's got these little locks right here that locks it. So every time you go back to the brush, all your settings will be the same. So angle, we can turn pin tilt on. And then now you see, and this is important because if your tablet supports tilt, then it will be activated. If it does not support tilt, then you'll have a little triangle with an exclamation point, And therefore, your tablet does not support tilt. And the drivers won't activate that option inside of Photoshop. <clears throat> um, Another thing, uh, file, image. So we're going to go to image size. Right now, we are at 15 by 10, 15 wide by 10 high at 300 DPI, and we're at an RGB color gamut. It depends on how you work and <coughs> what you are interested in doing with your illustration. Eventually, I like working in RGB because it doesn't take up as much uh, RAM. 
And uh, in terms of color, the colors are a little bit brighter because it's got red, green, blue, because I don't inject that black in there. The second you, in, you have a CMYK, which is the standard print format for a lot of magazines and, and periodicals, um, you're going to inject black over on top of everything. So that being said, RGB is a little bit brighter. So we're going to go with that. So let's go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to show you how I'll go in and I'll just start putting in some of these lines, very loose, although it does have a tightness to it. I'm not really worried right now about so much the, how do I put it? If I do make a mistake, it's not a big deal. And again, I want that really nice textured line quality to come out. And that's really going to add to the character of the piece. Character story, at the end of the day, that's what really matters whenever it comes to artwork. You know, you have beautiful renderings, but the rendering only goes so far. It's like whenever I tell people, you know, talent only gets you so far, you actually have to do the work to be successful. Okay. And as you notice, I'm not, my lines, they're, they're different. The, you know, I don't have, like right here, why did I leave that to not be a solid line? Again, I'm thinking of later on, whenever I start to do the light, light you know, in, in terms of form, light is going to affect the form in a way that whenever you have a highlight, you're not going to see as much contrast as you would down here when you have that weight, you know, gravity. I'm thinking of gravity. I'm thinking of, you know, what, like here, differentiation of line weight. You know, line weight matters. As I go in and put in some of these little elements. And it is, you know, sometimes, like right there, we have a little bit of an issue. And what's really nice is I can go back. See? And I can change my mistake. You know, I, I know there's a famous artist that says, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Well, no, sometimes there's mistakes, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. And in the digital realm, you absolutely have the capability to correct those mistakes, you know, which is great <laughs> because, you know, you don't want to have a, a mistake that is detracting from the overall piece. There we go. As you see, it comes about really fast. And you see I'm going up. And then with that pressure curve. Huh. That's interesting. Watch this. I didn't do it when I was up here. I'm, what I'm noticing is a lot of times just the way that I draw, I hit this secondary button. And what it does is switches to eraser because that's how I have it programmed. And occasionally, there'll be a little bit of an issue. And that has to deal, do with user error. User error. And I'm not necessarily using the underpainting as a... I'm just going to trace. I'm only tracing. No, I'm, I'm pushing and pulling that sketch that drawing underneath to really try and give it a little bit more life. You know, I'm spending more time in the sketch phase. And even though I want it to be nice, I still want to have fun with it. You know, nothing, nothing is more of a bummer then sitting down to draw, and then you get into the drawing, and then it's it's drudgery, right? You're sitting there, you're drawing, and you're not enjoying yourself. That's not what I'm about. Got to have fun, right? 
and I'm not necessarily looking just yet to put in any of the uh, the highlights. Bridge right here that comes down. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put you guys on time lapse so you kind of see the process of me putting in this final line. And then whenever we get the final line in, then we'll come back and we'll talk about what we're going to do after that. So, let's get started.
Okay, so I wanted to stop really quick because I'm at that stage again in the illustration where I'd like to explain exactly what I've done. So I have finalized my line work and I've placed a hue in the background again because you see the difference between drawing on this and drawing on this. This gives that median hue, that tone um, for me to draw on. It's not, it's not a gray. I went with a blue again, because of, there's going to be a lot of orange in here. And I wanted to contrast that orange and I'm going to have a nice warm, um, uh, a warm color coming from the moon, which is going to rim light a lot of these trees. These trees are going to be pushed into silhouette. So what I'm basically going to do next, and you're going to watch me, I'm going to go ahead and do a value study. Um, Value studies are important because, you know, if your values don't work um, in the context of the illustration, then you're not going to know where your light source is. You're not going to know what the subject is. And it doesn't matter how much color and pizzazz you put in there, the illustration will not work. So also you can see variation of line weight here and there. And I might go ahead and push that variation of line weight a little bit more. Variation of line weight means the thickness and the thinness of the lines, depending on where they are in relationship to you, the viewer. So stuff up here will have a thicker line weight. Stuff in the background will have a thinner line weight. And I did go a little bit thicker right here <coughs> just because these are gonna be in silhouette. So that being said, if you watch, I can even push this back a little bit. You see suddenly it becomes, even if I do this, so right now it's kind of, you know, everything's on the same plane sort of. And then you look back and you see the house back here. But the second I go ahead and push this back in terms of value, it gets pushed back. And you have now a foreground, a midground, and a background. So I'm going to go ahead and start messing around with the line weights. I'm not going to do a really hard inking, per se, um, because, again, that's not really my style. <laughs> I don't really go in and do really hard ink lines with all the hatching and stuff. I like to rely upon, um, you know, my value studies and, and, and the value and the textures to really speak and tell the story. And then, of course, I'll fix things like this right here. Then you're like, well, what's wrong with that? That's a tangency. And tangencies typically, that'll put this particular board right here, the fence, on the same plane as that tree in the background. And I don't want that. So I'll literally, I'll go through and I'll start fixing little things here and there to help shore up the power of this illustration. So just fixing that, push that board forward. And I'll go around and I'll look to make sure that I don't have any tangencies um, that are happening. I do see one that's almost happening right here. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and have this come down. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm going to put you guys on time lapse because this illustration is going to take a while and I want to try to keep it at a manageable time. So enjoy the time lapse. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
and here is where we are landing with this piece. Um, so typically what I'll do in this stage is I'll just, you know, spend maybe 20 minutes to half an hour putting in atmospherics and atmospherics being things that will be, you know, in the atmosphere um, that will help aid in perspective. So I'll give you an example. So you guys saw me put in some of these color hues <clears throat> in there and putting a little bit of uh, mood, <laughs> giving you a little bit of mood. So what, <clears throat> what now I'm going to do is put in, like I said, some of those atmospherics. So I'll go ahead and put in, let's see, da, 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 like this one right here. Okay, so we'll change the color. Did get kind of that creepy color. And maybe we're putting in a little bit of this creepy fog that has come in. And see, just that little bit aids in the mood. It's not a scary mood. That's, you know, one of the things about my illustrations that I always try to convey is they're not scared. This particular piece isn't scary, but it's fun. But it has that, you know, that seasonal mood. You know, anybody can draw gross. Anybody can draw disgusting. You know, but doing this, doing it to where it's still seasonal, but also a, a lot of fun. You know, Phoenix sitting there on the pumpkin patch, you know, just enjoying his spoils from his trick-or-treating, you know, it's just, it's fun. And as I go in, I'll put in just a little bit here and there. I don't want to overdo it. You don't want to overdo it. And that's what's, again, great about digital illustration is if I was like, yeah, I'm going to put in a thousand of these. You know, I can be like, ah, oh, I really don't like that. And I can just, you know, go back. And then maybe the edge is a little bit hard. So I'll go up to my filter, my Gaussian blur. I still want a little bit of hard edge. Yeah. And if I want to change the layer transparency on it. Maybe a little bit more. Let's see what it looks like. Normal screen. I like the screen because it, it still has that color hue, but it leaves just a little bit of the color coming through. And then what I'm going to do as a final... Oh, i got one more thing I'm going to do here. i got to adjust my tablet here. So let's go ahead to white. And I'm going to get some speckles. Speckles here and there. And there's always a little bit of speckle stuff you're going to see, which again helps aid in that perspective, that distance relationship, foreground, middle ground, background. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to help that as well. So again, we'll go to Gaussian Blur. Just a little bit. I like zooming in and out. Because first it's fun, woohoo! But also, the distance read is something bounces out, pops out. If the contrast pops out to me and it doesn't work, then I'm going to go in and fix it. So I've got all of my illustration on one layer. I'm going to copy that over here in the layer palette, and I'm going to hide my group, which is the illustration and layers. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten. It'll let me. Oh. I must have something hidden in there. I do. Locked. I have a locked layer. That locked layer. Okay. That happens occasionally. And E. Oh, I see what it's doing. Okay, so let's do this. Let 
Let's do it again. Group. All of my layer transparencies on top were prohibiting me from flattening. Okay, so now I've got my illustration on one layer. And I'm going to go ahead. You see I still have some crisp lines here. I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my blur. And as you see, what this is going to do is it's going to push that house in the distance way back. It's going to get rid of the details that are there, some of the grass I don't want to see. And what's nice is if I'm like, oh my gosh, I completely messed up. Look, I've got my entire layer right here. I've got everything set up to where I can go back in. I can adjust whatever I need. You can't do that in the trad traditional world. You'd be up the proverbial creek. Okay. So again, I think these lines are a little bit too harsh. Pushing those back behind Phoenix. Pushing those back. You know. And these on the peripheral. My See, I know what the subject is. The subject of this illustration is him. So all this other stuff that is contrasting, I'm trying to push it back. Okay, like this right here. I'm going to push that. I'm going to push that. Good. Around here. So on and so forth. Like I said, this is a process. You know, and even though I had a, a decent thumbnail, which I'm going to pull up here in a second to show you guys the entire process here. So that's going to be in... Again, I want the things that I want to be in focus are important. You know? Okay. And I think that's where I'm going to land with this piece. Let's go ahead back. And I will go all the way up. And we will hide. So it's here. Here's where we were with the initial sketch. Let's go ahead and image. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Here's the initial thumbnail sketch that I did in the very beginning. And here is the final. So hopefully you guys learned something today. Definitely please, please, please know that this illustration took probably about three and a half hours, four hours total. So it just takes time, you know, sitting down, doing the sketch, you know, figuring out what your color palette's going to be, you know, possibly doing a value study, which I said I was going to do on this one. But at the end of the day, just because of time, making sure the video doesn't go over a billion hours, I went ahead and jumped right into color and you know local color and I started adding my light and shadows and that actually went really quick. Color was the fastest. It was the sketch that took the longest and you know the sketch is extremely important and then you go into final line and at the end of the day um, you know the color is just something you can also spend a ton of time on, time on. You can see I left a lot of the texture in there because I like that it adds character to my illustration and overall, you know, even now, I can go back in, I can use, you know, the burn and dodge tool, so burn, and I can push some of those shadows just a little bit more to help the piece. And I can conversely do the same thing with my dodge tool. Make 
sure in the mid tones. Yeah. Ah, yes. And definitely for the you guys that are on the fence of stepping into, you know, getting into digital illustration, I would just encourage you um, to look at what's out there and and see that that digital art revolution that's going on right now. You know, I came from a traditional background, so I I grew up drawing with pencil and paper and painting with paint and acrylics and oils and watercolor and really understanding and learning how those materials work. And it's no different with digital illustration, you know, learning the programs, learning how the different brushes work, learning how the programs can help you. You know, at first it's going to be a learning curve and that, that definitely happens. And that's why I want to do tutorials for you guys and, and show you how these uh, pieces of tech can be integrated into your workflow, you know, whether it be a smaller tablet, whether it be a larger tablet, whether it be a portable tablet, it really doesn't matter. It's just a tool. And, you know, as you progress through this thing we call art and learning how to draw and learning how to create, you know, these tools will improve and and help you uh, along the way. Um, I definitely want to encourage you to uh, you know, draw something every day, um, whether it's small, whether it's big, and it's not just drawing. Maybe, you know, you're a digital sculptor, maybe you're a traditional sculptor. You know, it really doesn't matter, you know, that creative juices that are inside of everyone. Um, you know, the world has a lot of beauty in it, and it's up to us as creators to bring that beauty out and show what's best in, in humanity. So thank you guys, and please like and subscribe the video. You know, when it comes to the analytics, I, I see, you know, a lot of people watching the video, but I found out recently that the video actually doesn't get blown out to all my subscribers until people comment on it and like it like past 90 or 100. So definitely it'll help the channel out and uh, we'll be able to get more and more videos like this out to you guys. Thanks again and have a great day.